Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. So normally in this video we will learn about the different ways of using the console statement in the JavaScript. So normally what I want to tell you is so the if you are a JavaScript programmer and all those things, so coming uh, this coding without bugs is uh, very nice. But sometimes we will be it is very hard to avoid the bugs. So the normally the one of the best way to debug the code in the JavaScript code is using the console.log. So normally if you try to see here, the best way we will be using is the console.log. Now for example, let's say. So normal way is one way is the using the console.log statement. So console.log test console. So this is one way which we will be using in our JavaScript code. So this is the one of the best way to debug JavaScript and this is amazing console.log. But there are also different better ways also to use this console. So in this video, we will learn how many different ways we can use this console and what are the better ways we can debug the code in the JavaScript. We'll try to see it. Now, normally when you see here, when I type in your IDE, any IDE, console dot and if you press uh, control space bar or anything, auto completion, and you'll be able to see a lot more thing like console dot error one info. These are all the things you'll be able to see. So these are all the uh, different ways of using the uh, console statements. So now the first one is using the now here we will be having the console.log right. So the first way is using console.warn okay. So console.warn and here you can write this is warning. And what is the difference between normal console.log and also the console.warn and here also you have an another one that is nothing but error. And here if you try to see here error. And now if you see here the normal console.log is uh, coming as a normal plain text in our console statement. And here, here in the warning, you will be able to see this is a warning. Okay, so this is a warning you will be able to see. And if you try to see here, and the console dot error, this is an error. So here, when there is a bug, so you think that here the bug will come in any statement when you think that the bug will come, that will may stop working of your application means then you stop using this console dot log. You can use console dot error so that you can differentiate the errors with the normal console dot log and the warnings. So now your console messages won't get mixed up. So you can't find the message that you are looking for. So the, uh, so if you are using normal plain uh, console.log statements means so these all the statements will get mixed up and you will not able to find. So whereas you are mentioning like this means so then you will be able to see these all the things. So this is the one this is first way which where you can overcome uh, this type of mixing up of the messages. So the console.warn and also the console.error. So now the another important thing which I want to note, note is timer. Okay, for example, let's say that you are having a loop for i is equal to 0, i less than 10,000 or anything and I am doing i plus plus. Okay, and here I am using console.log, uh, oh, sorry, I am not using this one. So now when I execute this one, I want to know how many, uh, how much time it took for this for loop to execute. So for this one, we have an another one that is nothing but at the starting you need to write console.time. Okay, console dot time and you need to mention the time here loop timer. Okay, and in the same scenario. So after finishing of this one, so we need to use console dot time end console dot time end. And here you need to remember that whatever the name you have given. So the name the same name you can you need to give here. So now if you try to refresh the save this page. So here you will be able to see the loop timer. It took something around 0 0.8 milliseconds. So like this, you will be able to get the timing messages also. Okay, so it will create a timer. So and you need to give a unique name. So then run the piece of code. So like this, you will be having. This is very useful in CPU intensive applications that would take some time like neural networks or HTML canvas reading like this. So this is one way. Okay, so then now if you try to give another ending, another means you will be able to get a message something like warning loop timer doesn't exist. So here when you try to see here, you will be able to get a loop timer. So this is one thing. So now we have learned about the timing also. Now, for example, we have another situation in our JavaScript in a such way that, for example, let's say that I'm having a function trace. So this is the function I'm having. Okay. And, and here I am having some for random function. Okay. Random function. So some random function is there. So which will be calling this trace. Okay. And here uh, I am calling this random function. Okay. So now I want to know that this trace function is calling. Okay. Console.log. So just I am doing trace called. 
okay now here you will be able to see that you are able to get a message trace called now i want to know that where this who who has called this trace function so i want to trace this function call so to uh, so i want to see how this function was called so bob so now <coughs> So like this for this one. So what you can do is here you can write a statement something like console dot trace. So I want to trace this function who are calling this one. Now if you try to see here, so trace call this is the console statement and here you will be able to see the trace. So now if you try to see here, this is an anonymous. So that means the global JavaScript function it is calling the global JavaScript file, and the global JavaScript file has called the random function. Yes, correct. Random function the global JavaScript file has called it, and this random function has called this trace. So like this you can trace the Function who has called this one. So this is the use of this console dot trace. So this is one way where you can use. So now that is one thing. So this is the main JavaScript code, and main JavaScript code has called the random function, and the random function has called the trace method. So like this, you can trace the function call who has called. It. So this is also one of the important thing when you are trying to see who has called this function method or something like that means then you will be able to recognize. And another one which I want to discuss is the grouping the console messages. Okay. so grouping the console messages is also one of the important thing which you need to understand if you group console messages you can make your console easier to read so what i want to tell you is so here i will try to remove it console dot log okay test one so i will give something like test one and here from here onwards i want to group some of the console messages okay so let's try to give console dot group okay so my message group anything whatever the message you want you can give it my message group and here i will give console dot log okay test 1 anything or test 2 test 2 test 2 i am writing it like this and here i will do console dot group end okay console dot group end i am ending the group and here i will write console dot log test 3 so now if you try to see here so now here this is all coming under under my message group so this is coming under my message group now you will be able to see these all the log messages are under one group so this is one thing this is also uh, one important thing which you can use it so apart from this one all so if you want to clear all your consoles okay so apart from this one all you want to clear is uh, console so now you want to erase this all the console means so now you will be able to see so many consoles are there something like that you want to erase means you can use console dot clear that's it now if you try to see here everything console was clear so that is one thing which we can use it so this is how we will be maintaining the console messages and all those things so hope you understood about this one so what we have learned we have learned about the console dot log console dot warn console dot error and we have learned about the console dot trace function we have seen it and console dot timing we have seen it timing operation and also we have seen the trace i have already told it grouping the console messages we have seen and also the erasing the console so these are the different ways where we can use the console for better coding hope you understood about these console statements if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you